All right, attention teeth whitening technicians. Did you know that even if your client signs a consent form allowing you to apply products, teeth whitening products like hydrogen peroxide, carbon peroxide, gingival gel, all these things that you are physically applying to your clients, did you know that even if they sign that consent form, you are still held reliable if something were to happen with your client's teeth, with their gums, uh, you will still be responsible for that. So if you didn't know that, stay tuned. I have some information for you. Gina, I am the owner and educator of Impress. <laughs> Let me do that again. Impressive Glow Spray Tan Teeth Whitening. Why can I not say this? Hello, welcome to Impressive Glow. My name is Gina. I am the owner and educator of Impressive Glow Spray Tan and Teeth Whitening Training, where my ultimate mission is to help women, moms, single moms, learn how to start a side hustle as a spray tan or teeth whitening technician and to build some financial independence in that process. All right, so give me a little scary face emoji in the comments if you are a teeth whitening technician or are thinking about becoming a teeth whitening technician and have been led to believe that by having a client sign a consent form allowing you to apply products or help them apply products to themselves uh, is something that you were told and now you are scared because that's what you've been doing in your business. Give me a little scary face emoji if that is you because in today's video, I'm gonna let you know why that does not allow you to physically touch clients, um, the things that we actually should be putting on our consent forms and all the things. So I think one of the biggest things as to how teeth whitening can be so misconstrued with information is because I think trainers who are teaching people how to offer teeth whitening are really leading their students to believe that if your client signs a consent form that states that you are allowed to apply product for them or that you are allowed to assist them is something that is law abiding and is going to protect you if something were to happen to your client during the whitening process and that could not be the farthest thing from the truth so i want to give you as much information as i can today as to why that doesn't make sense <laughs> So I've done some videos in the past explaining teeth whitening laws and regulations and all of those things. So uh, watch the video here that I just recently did on explaining teeth whitening laws for particular states. But a really quick rundown as to what the information is in that video is a lot of teeth whitening laws are written with the idea of how you are going to um, offer your service, whether you are gonna be physically touching your client or whether you're not gonna be physically touching your client. And so anybody who is actually physically touching a client and who is actually physically applying gel or gingival gel or all of these other different things to their client actually do have to be medical professionals uh, in a setting where it is controlled in a facility by an actual dental professional. So ideas of you actually touching a client out of there and thinking that you can have a consent form signed could not be the farthest thing from wrong when it comes to offering teeth whitening. Your state dental board will not recognize a signed consent form from your client that would allow you to apply products to them because in actuality, you as a dental technician needs to know that you just can't do that regardless of somebody signing a consent form. That's like your mailman getting somebody to sign a consent form for plastic surgery. Like that's just not how that goes. It's not recognized. You should know the regulations, you should know the laws and what you can and cannot do within that kind of scope of practice when it comes to teeth whitening. So that is why consent forms are not legally binding forms for you to actually physically apply products to your clients. Now that's not to say consent forms are bad. There are great reasons why you need to have consent forms with your teeth whitening service. So I'm gonna get into some of the questions that I ask on my teeth whitening consent form and the reasons why. So basic client information is one of the most important things that you wanna have on your consent form. Their name, their date of birth, an email address. That is so important just for marketing aspects. Uh, you wanna be able to record the progress of their whitening or their whitening progress. So their starting shade, their ending shade, um, all of those types of things. So just basic client information is super important to have on your consent form. 
So one of the first questions that I always like to ask on my consent form is, have you ever had a teeth whitening done before? What that will allow you to do is kind of open up the conversation as to what they can expect with your teeth whitening uh, treatment, your service. Maybe they're a little bit hesitant. Maybe they had some sensitivity before. Maybe they didn't have a great experience. That is your opportunity to explain why your teeth whitening system works so much better, that you really understand the laws and how to keep them safe and keep yourself safe. So it's actually a really good a question to just kind of know where they're coming from in terms of a teeth whitening situation. Another question is, have you had a professional dental cleaning within the last six months? This is very important when it comes to explaining and managing expectations for your client, because what is the number one question that we always get is, well, how light or how many shades am I going to get? How long is it going to last? Well, one of the most important things to understand is that the best time to actually have your teeth whitening service done by me or by another uh, teeth whitening technician is actually right after you have had a really good every six month deep cleaning from your dentist because then our products don't have to fight through all of the film, all the protein, all the tartar, all of that kind of stuff on their teeth. And so what I find sometimes is clients think that by coming to me to get teeth whitening done, it's almost like a replacement for their regular dental visits, which is not, could it be farthest from the truth? So definitely I wanna ask, are they maintaining that? Because then we can really set some expectations and I can let them know when the best time is for them to come in and get that teeth whitening done. One of the other really important questions is asking clients whether they are a smoker or they are a coffee drinker. Again, managing expectations because originally they may need additional treatments to get to the goal that they are trying to achieve. But with those daily not so great habits of smoking or drinking coffee and not drinking it through a straw, we can really manage the expectations to let them know before we even start their service that this may not get them to the brightest that they're looking to achieve the very first time and they may need to come back for a couple more different treatments for us to get to that goal whiteness but that's all based on daily habits another important question do they have any allergies are they allergic to anything it's really important that you know what types of ingredients are in your teeth whitening system or in your teeth whitening um, pens and all of these different things because what if your client has an allergy to hydrogen peroxide or what if they have an allergy to a particular ingredient that is in your whitening treatment um, in ingredients in your pens or your solution or any of those things well you can really cut the um, situation out of them having an allergic reaction and making it a bigger deal than it is, uh, that it would get to if they, if you were to have known that prior to you, to them actually starting uh, that whitening session. So make sure you know if they have any allergies prior to you getting started. Do you or have you had braces within the last five years? I guess, have you had braces in the last five years? Because you don't want to offer teeth whitening services to somebody who has braces. But I like to know if they've at least had or braces done within the last maybe five to eight years. Because what can also happen is, especially with Impressive Glow products, which are our teeth whitening system, because they do work so good and because they um, actually do brighten the teeth so much, oftentimes the adhesive or the glue that your or their orthodontist may have used to fasten those brackets to their teeth could have actually really damaged their teeth and left like a little outline of the actual bracket. And sometimes that can only be seen after they've had a teeth whitening session. My daughter in particular, sometimes you can see a little bit of an outline where the brackets are but once she gets a teeth whitening done it's much more apparent where that actual adhesive was on their teeth so you can kind of give them a little expectation that if they have had braces before they may may want to think about it because it may show where those brackets are that should kind of subside after a couple days or so but it is a possibility and you may see that outline of that adhesive I also want to ask if my client has any veneers, implants, crowns, um, filler composites where they may have had a chipped tooth, which is super important because no, we cannot whiten those teeth any whiter than what they originally went in as, what the original color was when they went in. So it's super important to know that if you have, let's say like a chipped tooth and that bottom part is a composite filling, well, we may be able to get all the teeth around that whiter, but that part where the composite is or the veneers are, we're really not gonna get those any wider than what they originally went in as. We're definitely gonna be able to remove surface stains, but they may wanna have, think about that before we actually get the whitening process done because we don't want the other teeth to be super, super bright and the other teeth to maybe not be as 
matched in terms of color when it comes to like all of their teeth so it's a great question to ask if they have any of those implants veneers or any type of composite fillings or something that may have been put in uh, at a particular color do you have any periodontal disease do you have any canker sores do you have any exposed roots in your mouth I do not want to touch any of these people with a 10-foot pole we have to to let their mouth heal. Uh, we have to make sure they're seeing their dentist, their specialist. Um, so if they have any open wounds in their mouth, if they have any exposed roots, if they have any periodontal disease, like down into that gum line, we definitely do not want to touch them um, or have themselves, you know, put any type of whitening agent on their, uh, on their teeth or near their gums. We want to make sure all of that is healed prior to us doing a teeth whitening service. So make sure you ask that question. All right, so these are some of the most important questions that I ask on my personal consent form with my teeth whitening service. Now, if you are thinking of starting a teeth whitening business, which I think is a great idea, uh, watch this video. I actually did a recent video about mobile teeth whitening services and what you should have in your bag, what your setup should look like, and I even have a free download for you, a free checklist in there. So watch this video all about how to, uh, how to set up for mobile teeth whitening. So don't forget also, I offer online, live, virtual, and in-person small group training in Southern California. If you guys have any questions, I'm going to leave all the information in the description below. I hope you guys have a great day.